Joel Cortuccio. I do vocals in Being as an Ocean. And uh, I'm Tyler, and I play guitar. They've been fucking awesome, actually. Uh, just, I know that we've never, like, been in a festival situation where it was kind of a part of the tour and playing, like, Empiricon Festival, you know, obviously has multiple days. And, like, I know that we've never been in a part of like, a European festival like that, um, where literally every single, uh, you know, stop is is different, but very similar in the same spirit. And, uh, and you have anything to say about Empiricon Fest? It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of random for me to be talking about because it it's mostly Joel. Like he pretty much travels around. If you have ever watched him at a big show, he pretty much gets down on the barrier and gives people the mic and, you know, gets in the crowd. And it's rare to see if it's a big stage for him to just stay on the stage. So I would say even if it's a big show, you're not just like he's still going to come over like to the crowd and be right next to the crowd like it might be a big crowd but still you know i think uh i think that it's it's pretty much fine i think it it, it still is a really awesome experience and you know uh um uh, we the players like me and ralphie and mike and connor like kind of feed off of that like we oh i watch what he's doing and then you know i'm playing farther away on stage but you know i see what's going on uh yeah, I think like come kind of akin to what Tyler is saying. Um, like we really like feed off of that intimate intimate energy in in the smaller club shows, um, and and that kind of just like carries us through the whole set. Um, but yeah, for like myself, uh, I I just want to like make the people feel that they're as close as they could be. And like, I, I know that the guys in, in the rest of the band like feel the same exact way. Um, we want to, you know, put on the kind of show that you would see in a club, like here at these big festivals, like even if I can't, you know, exactly see the furthest person away, like I think it's still very like similar in, in the kind of spirit that we try to, you know. <laughs> I think it kind of just came about organically. Um, we were searching for an album title in the lyrics and stories that I had written. Um, and it, one of the, the instances, excuse me, instances um, that we really kind of like stuck on was a, a song called St. Peter that's in the, the album. And it was basically about, you know, like, a German man, he's probably in his 60s, working at a hotel, and upon like us meeting him and sharing our band name, he knew exactly where it had come from. And it, it was kind of just like an interesting experience that we had with him. So uh, after so much deliberation, being as an ocean, like a self-titled album, um, just seemed right. It, it's it's a lot more fast paced um as far as lyrics go uh you know it, it's different in the fact that a couple of the songs are very personal to myself and then uh, a couple of the songs are story based and things that i've um you know had conversation with people and and chosen to write something about you know that interaction um but as tyler will tell you yeah it's it's a it keeps a, a steady pace yeah um i think the album is a bit faster than the last one and and i think the last one was a bit faster than um than dear god so 
it's probably the f the fastest pace album we've had not by a huge margin i wouldn't expect a huge change from parish but take the fastest song on parish and call that the new like standard on this album it's pretty much how it goes and uh i think the songs we're about to go on warp tour for the first time so i was trying to kind of write songs that would apply to like that environment and make sense i think we did a good job like we've just been playing one new song recently but to be honest like it goes over pretty well and it's not out yet like no one has heard the song um and it's not released but it, it's pretty fast paced it's a, it's the same speed as the fastest song on um parish and uh it's pretty like high energy the whole time and it has like a really big um like breakdown and bridge and every festival we played it at and stuff i think it just goes over well even if you haven't heard of the band or the song there's just like this moment in it where everybody's kind of like oh yeah yeah like they get and they get really into it um so it's really easy to like catch on to so i like that song and that song's like pretty high energy has like uh it's fast with like um if nice if you calm down yeah yeah it has like a calm bridge and most of the verses and stuff have like the traditional rock feel which is like snare on two and four except it's like it's fast the tempo's up at like 180 so i don't know it's a good fast song and everybody seems to get into it already so once we release it i think it's gonna be really cool <laughs> our friend g made it um G is a French artist um, studying at Central St. Martin's in, um, in London uh, right now. And he's a really good friend and he's made the mo all the most important art uh, pieces for this band. He's made like the logo that's like handwritten script. He made that himself with like a bamboo stick that's shaved into a pen and he has made his own inks and all this stuff. And, um, and our our, all, our our yeah our only promotional picture that we have with the five of us it's very dark it's like black and white and and it's um it's very like smudged and there's all this like there's all this like matter and material on it it's a film picture that he took outside michael's house michael lives in england um our other guitarist and uh and so g came over to michael's house and we took this picture and if you look at the picture really closely you can see g's thumbprint on the picture because he developed it it's a film picture so he took the picture on film and then he you know used his own chemicals and developed it himself and he smudged his whether on purpose or on accident he's very smart about this kind of stuff but he his thumbprint is over like michael's face ish or above michael's face so if you look closely you see the five of us and then g's like fingerprint is above it so it kind of it's just like it's a metaphor for like that his like handprints are like on like the band and stuff i think it's really cool and and the only profile picture that we have on any like network online it's like a really dark picture of joel g took it to show so all the most important stuff like the logo the 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 like primary picture all that stuff like g took anything that we can get him to do we try and get him to do so he made the album cover for this album he drew it in charcoal it uh maybe if this interview comes out right now that you know people will have not seen it yet but um it's the back of a woman and g said that uh he wanted it to represent uh like a mother um he was reading into some of the lyrics and some of the stories and the single that we've been playing it's the first track it's called little richie um uh it's about uh a young boy and uh and it's about his mom and his dad and um uh you know issues that he uh that he has in his life and etc and anyway um so g wanted to capture the essence of like this boy's mom or the like uh archetypal mom like the idea of like a mother whether that's like a mother now or like a mother in the future um so I don't know you you look at this lady on the cover and you there's the the feel of her like pre the it's very abstract when you when you'll see the cover i don't know if you've seen this interview the cover will be out yet but um you can uh you can like sort of feel that the woman is a mother based on like the shape of her like silhouette and like 
her like the way she holds herself but it's very abstract you kind of gotta look into it and uh i think it's really uh I think it's nice. I love everything G does. So yeah, he 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 did a bunch of stuff. He took some photos that were gonna be the cover, and, and he changed his mind. And he, you know, I didn't see a lot of the process. He Very would he, much an artist. Yeah, he would email me. You know, um, two months after he said he was gonna make the cover, and oh, I've, I made this cover and I made that cover, but I don't like it, and I changed it. And then he just sent me that, and I was like, this is great. This is perfect. Like we're using this, and he was like, okay. So he he he. Uh, he works really hard, so he's a great guy. I very much think that negative emotions are just part of the human experience. Uh, and that's like, I, I think a big part of the, of the new album is that, you know, we're gonna come to a point in our lives where we experience negative emotion no matter its facet and it, it's how we deal with those situations that bring up those negative emotions that define who we are as people and uh, I think that's a lot of what this album is about um, so yes to answer your questions like I, I think this new album is definitely dealing with um, like how to deal with those negative emotions that this life will inevitably bring <laughs> At least for myself, it's been the only way I've ever really dealt with adult emotions. Um, we started playing music together when we were very young, about 13 years old, and uh, in, in various bands. And Tyler has always been the, the writer and the guitarist, and I've always been the vocalist and the lyricist. And it, it, it's just been are growing up um, and I think this band is kind of the antithesis of that uh, just the the complete adult version of what we had growing up and I'll pass it over to Ty I think I have I've thought about this question a lot actually um, we're all everybody in the band is pretty into uh, we're pretty into art and pretty deep into it like we like a lot of different art forms and we have like friends who are very good at like all sorts of different types of art and we s really appreciate i mean if you watch like one of our shows or something there's more art to it than just like playing the music part of the, like the performance and part of the idea of like you know, getting all the crowd to sing one part or jump on each other is not just so that you your band can be big. That that there's that is like an artistic moment. That's what we're trying to make happen. Like the entire time, when you see all these kids, you know, striving together and jumping on top of each other to yell some lyric that's like part of the whole art. Like, I, it's not just something that happens on accident. It's something that's like. You, you we you kind of try and coax everything towards because that is a part of the whole art of why you would see a band live now on a recording it's different the art is in how you you know listen to the record yourself when you're at home and your surroundings and all that stuff but anyway the reason i think m m i like to make music as a form of art is um i don't know i think music is really interesting um Maybe, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to compare music to other forms of art, but let's say music as a, as you're talking about a way to express yourself or as a way to say something. I think that when you, yeah, as a form of media, that's a good word. I think uh, when you make music, all of a sudden, with music, you're saying something in the context of song and people have to just listen. People don't argue with you or say something back and you can say anything you want in the in the context of music and people say well it's a song you know he's saying what he wants in a song you could say anything a song there's death metal bands that say you know oh i'm chopping off someone's head and then I, you know i kick it into the gutter or you know but it's not it's not real it's just it's art and it's like no one knocks them for saying that i mean of course there's parents who are like oh this is horrible but at the end of the day you can say anything like 
just freely and people it's all just art and it's about how people interpret it. I think it's so interesting because you could, you could come out with a song that you could be a very positive person and come out with a song that says, Oh, you know, I, you know, hate everyone. I hate everything. And then you could say, well, that song was written from the perspective of someone who like there, there's nothing someone can say to like knock you for how you write a song. That's why I just think it's really interesting. It gives you basically, I think it's, to me, it's very magical and very awesome. When you write a song, you have a pure moment, three minutes, five minutes, eight minutes that you wrote that you like, you set something down in sound and that's going to live forever. That's going to be on a computer, on a disc, on a vinyl. And it's you saying something and and people just listen to it as like something you're saying in time, in melody, and they just hear it. And it's like the statement that you put out there and then it just never changes. It's just like frozen in time. I think it's really awesome. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I think it's really beautiful that anyone can get into music and anyone can become successful or big or known or liked or niche or cult or anything like you don't need money and you don't need you don't need you don't even need you need so little besides like true uh, like you know artistic vision to become yeah. like known in music you don't it's so like possible for anyone with a true vision to make music and put it online and someone to find it i mean one of my favorite bands in the world is a band called Seiros from Iceland and in most of their albums or some of their albums or their main albums they don't even have lyrics their singer is basically singing like gibberish and nonsense that means something very special to a lot of people including myself so it's like here's even a band that they're not they're not they didn't need the English language to even impact English speaking cultures and it's just amazing you know and who knows if they had money or connections or anything probably didn't have anything and they probably couldn't even speak english very well but all of a sudden all these english speaking countries they're huge and people are identifying with their like their language which isn't a real language that they're just speaking and it means something to them i think it's really cool i think in music anybody has a shot to be honest absolutely anybody has a shot if you really have something to say and you know and a melody in your head like you can get it out there that's what i think is cool it's pretty it's pretty magical, I think. How can you say that?